just, just thought, just, I just, I just thought we'd start off with some dissonance. I, I want to go back to the song. This song's great. This song is such a great first day song. Let, let's go and explore. Let's have fun. Let's see this brand new world. This song, one of those songs that's gonna stick with me forever. The soundtrack just works. A good soundtrack makes me go goo every time I hear a song that made me go goo before. I mean, like, this song, if anything, just makes me feel about one thing that really feels like I need to say. The Miles scene, the more I think about it, doesn't really add anything. Bryce's character doesn't seem to get much out of it. The only thing that happens is that it's like, oh, uh, Maverick's a little bit more, go get him. But even then, it's like, it doesn't sign into his character that well. I don't know. It just feels unnecessary. Then again, God damn it. Okay, so here, here's a here's a here's a here's a here's a, a, a quiddity question, as they call them in the land of of the Jews. I don't mean those. What's wrong with you? It's Y O O, the Jews. Jesus. Um. Also, Como Como made some bad taste jokes. <laughs> The thing I'm going to say about it is, is if, if I ever invent time travel, as I, I said this a couple times before I said it again, if I ever invent time travel, I'm going to use it to, to figure out, I'm going to, if I can go through between timelines, this game is going to be literally 90% of my, like, first few years. Like, going to other timelines and see how this game ended up. I'm going to go to the timeline where there's got way too much fucking money. And I'm going to go to the timeline where I got just enough money. I'm going to go to the timeline where there's no fucking Lauren or Kevin, where I'm not even in on the deal. But it still succeeded, and there was no one who took the big backers. Like, mmm, mmm. See, that's what, what this game is. To me, this game, interestingly, has this meta-narrative of, I want to know what this was like in other worlds. Because I'm that kind of person who's like, mmm, I wonder what this could have been like. I like possibility space. I don't like collapsing the waveforms to, to get one timeline. I want all the timelines, boy. I want all of them, all at once. Anyway, enough of that happy-go-lucky song. That's not the song I'm playing today, because now Lorem is doing a, a spooky thing. Spooky Lorm. Let me make sure that I got that word right. Cause it's a mouthful. It's also not I think I think we more often use the term intersex though. I don't know. Yeah, man, this game, this game, I, I, to this day, I'm still with this mental idea of, I want to do this game again, and not blow it. Ugh, this goddamn game, man. There's something about this game that's magical. They say magic is, is sparkles and fireballs, but magic can be as simple as just wondering about other t <laughs> Can you imagine, like, someone if it's, I found a way to travel between timelines, and I just kick the fucking door in, and I go, I've got some things to see. Step in the machine. No, no instructions. I'll, I'll, fi I'll figure it out as I go along. <laughs> Hi, Izumi. <laughs> I'm just learning. <laughs> man, that's great. That's great. Ah, man, I hate it. I hate it so much. Because it'd be so cool. I can go to the timeline where this game was made by an alt-right version of Mr. Saunders. And it was a Nazi game. Could you imagine? It'd be great! And then I come back with this catalog. And I probably meet myself a few times. I probably shake my own hand. Be like, oh, that's me. Hi, me. One of the me's would try to kill me. But don't worry. I still have some bullets left in those guns I used to gun down the scientists for no reason. It'll work out fine. <laughs> I always... He didn't have any bullets left because he just he had to shoot the corpses too many times. He, he wanted to <laughs> If this ever happens, I'm gonna sell the movie script. I'm gonna sell it. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be the best movie ever. I like how he has to specify that. I mean, wouldn't it be kind of interesting if it was, like, uh, Adine and, and Lorem and, and 
and and Bryce, they all have to decide for themselves which they are. Like, the only reason people are, are kicking on Lorem is because he never decided what he was. Oh, Again, it's a better freaking story than what they went with. ba da ba ba da ba Which is like 90% of my commentary. Man, the story could have been so much better if it just did something a little bit more interesting and off the cuff than something predictable. Oh, oh, Man, I'm an ass. I should play some, 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 some... I, I deserve all the, the, all the, the, the fails I get in the Dungeons & Dragons. Man, I get so angry. I hate myself. I'm so angry. I've got too much going on right now. I need a fucking break. I, I need a, a goddamn minute to, to think about things, to sit on my ass all day, and to look at myself in the mirror and go, You're an ass! And then I go, Oh no, I'm a butt! Because I am. I feel, I feel so bad about it. Why am I like this? Why am I such an insufferable role player when it comes to Dungeons and Dragons? I'm a good GM, people like me. But the moment I'm a player, I feel like I have shit to lose. And I've got so much losing going on in real life that I can't tolerate it in the virtual space. Because this is the point. It's like when I play a Dungeon Dragons game, I want to have fun. I want to win. Because I like winning. I hate losing. Losing makes me angry. And my job is 90% losing. I had a discussion with this with Como when, we, when I was going to the war with it. I don't like losing. And, and Dungeon Dragons is... Uh, I just... Mm, uh, I'm a sad boy. I'm a sad, whiny, needy boy. But understand this. I'm only sad... Because I don't... Like... You know, I'd be more accepting of it if it was more frequent, or there was more time, and, 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 and there was a certain flexibility to it. But there's not! So every single time, I'm like... Mm, mm, mm. I'm an angry boy. I want to cry. I want to sit in the corner and cry. Meh! I changed this a bit because term freak of nature doesn't really exist in my knowledge. So, hmm. <laughs> the problem is if you use freak in this particular context, um, it, it actually means you're like a freak. You're like freaky, yeah. That kind of stuff, like the good stuff, instead of that stuff. Spaling, I don't think that works. Wait, it is? That can't be right. Oh, it is! I didn't know that. No, it's a it's like a deviation, not a freak. I'll just stick with this one. For some dragons that's a problem. A problem needs to be helped or should have never been. Captures the feeling. Oh, this is the split. Nah, I gotta do this a bit more generic. Raus! Oh, I love that. Oh. Oh man, I think I think we're watching some sort of uh, thing with with Hitler in the bunker, and my brother would go raus every time someone left the room rein whenever they entered. <laughs> uh, which kind of makes sense if if you're kind of makes sense if you're in a bunker and and and, and you want to make sure people don't bump into each other. But oh, that's that's cool. Anyway, time to do this in reverse order, because I don't like the saddle. Jesus Christ, Lorm! Why do you talk so much? You literally get told to get out, and your character's like, I'm gonna talk a bit. This, I hate this. I, I hate this. I, oh, I'm, I'm so pissed, I want to stop right now. Because this is hot garbage. Let me make one thing clear. If someone says get out, is larger than you, stronger than you, and just looks at you in a fashion that is not nice, your first inclination should not be, I'm gonna tell you what's what. At this point, I wanna bash this little skull in, not because of what he is, but because he's being a snooty little bastard who wants to get his cake and eat it too. No, Lorm, you can't have your cake and eat it too. You can't lecture me when I say I don't wanna be lectured and you get the fuck out of now. 
This, this, this line, just... Why? You... Here's the thing. You don't need to garner fucking sympathy like this. The sympathy is either there or it's not. At this point, the player character has already experienced Lorem is a nice guy. Who was like, yeah, let's bumping fists and, and, and hanging out with dudes. Like, if you don't care, you don't care. There's nothing you can do with Lorem. You're fighting an uphill battle. Which is, ironically, something you've run away from with your video game development. So I'm just gonna fucking say, Lorem, out of character for you to suddenly stand up for yourself like this, you little dipshit. Ugh! This makes me feel like I'm constipated. I'll go, but let me- No! Why can I not say no? Let, here's the thing. Why can't my character just say get out again? Why isn't that an option? That'd be great! It'd be great if, like, you could just say it again. You could be that giant monster dick. You could be the biggest, baddest ass regarding this. And it'd be great. It'd be fantastic. It would work. It would give you agency, and it would make you feel like a jackass. More than anything. If you don't give someone their last words before you kill them, that's a powerful moment. That says something about how you stand with that person. I'm just saying. That this- this scene, this, this fuck. Why? Why does he get a fucking lecture? Ah! Uh, I like. I know you gotta have certain writing conventions, but this is a fucking story with saves. It's not a book. You don't have to cover your ass. You can have bad endings that just don't work, because that's the fucking point of them. Is that they're unsatisfying? You know what's great? An unsatisfying ending in a in a in a story. That's why those adventure books work so well. You were like, ah, oh, I did a bad. I know I suck. And that was great, because it encouraged you to pick the good one, you fucker! Ah! The thing is, I would be a lot more accepting of this if it was if it was like I want to say something first instead of let me. The let me part just emphasizes this degree of power you're surrendering for no reason. Listen, dude, in our world you'd be a porn star. Actually, no. I've noticed that hermaphrodites are a bit on the down low lately. I think furry porn is evolving, <laughs> which is a weird thing for me to bring up, but. <laughs> Let's just say that it's not been as much in the forefront as I... Maybe it's just because I don't go there anymore. I don't know. It's just like how I just said that. I didn't even go there for the porn in the first place. It's like the art. Like these people for years to refine their craft. You have any idea how much money you make with that shit? You got a lot of time to draw anatomy. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to find a nude person. I don't want to see someone who's nude. That's gross. Ew. Real people are gross. They're all mucousy. They have ooze coming from their anal glands. Like some sort of monster. Why? Listen, this is this is obvious. Listen, you don't need to explain this. This is obvious. Give your reader some fucking credit. They'll understand that if people are going to be prejudiced, you're going to miss out on shit. That's logical. That's something that comes with the, with the fucking territory. If people say no, then naturally something isn't happening, and you missed out on that.
Like, again, why are we letting him fucking point fingers at us? You know what would be better? If Lorem just up and dies after this. Like, where does... Like, this is the problem with this ending. And, and like, the Remy ending, I think. Or some endings. Is, there needs to be another scene! Because there's a lot that could come out of this that needs to be elaborated upon. Ah. Like, Anna coming by with a pregnancy test being like, Nope! I was hoping out, but guess not. Or Bryce being like, mm -hmm. And this one, you could have Ipsum just showing up and being like, you fucking bastard. And then you get in a little fight with Ipsum. And then, you could do something fun that the story doesn't fucking do that it should have done. Which is, instead of having an option with I win, the story, go you'll get an option which is, and I won, because I'm bigger and stronger. Or, I lost, or I let him win, because I didn't want a conflict. You know, that kind of stuff. Like, giving you actual options in situations. And based on that, like, Ipsum is like, ugh. You know. That'd be great. That would flesh out Ipsum's character a bit, and, 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 and make Ipsum seem like he gives a shit about Lorem. Because it's strongly implied by the scenes that we do have that he's kind of like, eh. Like, he cares about Lorem in that one setting, but it's, like, mm, it's not enough. You need, you, need, you need a little more salt for that pepper to pop out, you know? Also this, I hate this. This implies your thinking or having second thoughts. This, again, great point to have another get-out moment. Or just straight up telling Lorm to shut the fuck up and leave. Like, why don't we get that? If you're gonna be a dick, give me the dickiest dick options possible. And give me the, the soft silk glove option. Let my character be like, man, I didn't mean it like that. You could, you could, ah, uh, it's just, mm, mm. I mean, let me make this one thing clear that I just love. Let me make this one... F let, me, let me just pull this up. So, no, it's not a Dean 4. It's a Dean 1. So, a Dean 1. Let me tell you why I think this one works so much better than this fucking scene. So, when Lorem shows up... Uh, when Adine shows up... Adine is like, Hey, here's food! She's trying to be optimistic about it. I like how this doesn't impact anything. She's like, hey, hee hee hee. Uh, it's kinda cute, it's got a fun little open. And then, you get this. You get to say, oh, thanks for the food, bloop. And she's like, hey, 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 hey. She, she butts in, she's like, hey, listen, listen, hey, 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 hoo 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 hoo. She's, she's rolling her bluff checks here. She's rolling her diplomacy. And she, she pleads her case. And then, you get to say, ah, I guess. Or, you get to fucking close the door in her ass. And I love this. And I love that your character immediately opens the container. You close the door and open it. And it was wrong. And you look outside and she's gone. I want to point out, Adine does not twist a knife. She doesn't rub it in. There's nothing about this. The only thing that happens is that you feel like a dick. For one, she fucked up. And two... You let her out. You, you, like, so much about this feels much more potent. Because now you're an ass. Someone just wants to get a little bit of shelter from the rain. That's a human thing to want. And you close the door. And the whole thing, the music stops, the door closed sound plays, and, and she's just gone. And, and you're just standing there with your food. It's great! Because it's normal. It's not this weird, contrived, I get my final word before the gun kills me. I don't like that. I hate that. I think when a movie is like, this character gets to live for like 18 hours so he can give a soliloquy on the nature of pants. Nobody fucking cares. I mean, 
you should get that character enough, but not too much. Give him enough that he can get a central point out. Which in Lorem's case would be, I don't know, what is his fucking point? He starts off with, man, I shouldn't have talked to you, could have been fine. Man, I did my thing and I did nothing in return. You told me not to... Like, what is his fucking point? That he wants to be truthful about things? Then let that be his point. Let his one thing that he manages to squeeze out before he can push his ass out the door be, I did what I believed was right. I stood up for what I believed was right, and I hoped for the best, but now I'm not worried. Great! Good lines! Strong lines! Character established! Bam! But instead, it's like, mm, boo! Boo! I'm gonna cry! I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm not even gonna give you the option to make me stop whine! Because that's the best part about Edine. Once! She gets once! She doesn't get to whine extensively. You get once. And she is gone. She doesn't give a shit. She's like, okay, well, you're an ass bike. And that's what makes her later encounter so much more potent, where she's like, man, you're an ass! You human? The problem is, I don't know what this means! It implies that he's talking about him having done nothing wrong, but it also could mean that he didn't do anything in return, and I don't know which it is. I don't know. I'm just gonna stick with that he means nothing in return. Because it's also less of a fucking sappy answer. Ugh, it's so sappy. Also, again, it's kind of doofy that there's this massive branch that just exists here, but it goes on anyway. Mm, so dumb. Also, this is not over. I have underestimated the length of this chapter. ba da ba ba da ba <clears throat> also, sorry to be going off for 22 minutes, so I'm just gonna do- I know what, you know what, we'll do the, the, the I'm not sure what to say answer. And we'll leave it at that. I mean, you could always just organize a D&D session and play a hermaphrodite. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Just saying. Here's the thing I would point out is, why does Lorm give me this much speech? Why does he, why does he give such a soliloquy about the situation? Like, why? <laughs> why? I don't, I hate this. L you have no lines in this. You have no fucking lines in this. What the fuck is this writing? Here, your character, like, sure, it makes sense, because this is him talking about himself. But it's just kind of doofy that you're not trying to comfort him or tell him to... <sighs> your character is just a wooden post in the room. You're, you're a support beam. You don't have a role in this scene. You're just here to make Lorem look good. I don't know. I doubt it! I doubt it!
I mean, wouldn't it be great if at this point you get the option to just deck him? At this point, you just get the option to just fucking deck him. Just BAM! Right in the kisser. It'd be great! Like, you might say, but that's counter to the... No. It's entirely in line with the point. You are violent. And it's Lorem being such a whiny bitch that brought out. It's like, you know, Lorem, I can take you being a hermaphrodite, but my god, you are whiny! You constantly repeat the same point. Like, bam! Give the player some agency. If this is going to be a shit ending anyway, just, just drive it into the ground. If you're gonna never have these characters meet again, drive it into the ground. Just dig the biggest hole you can dig and love it! Put some pepper and some spice in there and throw in every goddamn ghost pepper you can find in the country. Cause it's gonna be a bonfire, baby! It's gonna outshine even Knack 2, which is impossible, and it might outshine Knack. Not well, Knack 3. No, not Knack 3. That's way too high a go. I'm just saying. Like, live it. If you're gonna close something off with a perfect dead end, live it. Let me live it. Let me feel that anger, that rage. Let me feel the blood boil in my veins as I lift the boy above me head and slam him into the table. <laughs> and the funny part is, then when someone shows up, they're like, why the fuck is your table broken? And you're like, Rah, I am destroyer of children. <laughs> it's like, what's that accent? It is accent of man who is strong. Accent of Atlas. Man, I love Atlas. He punches things. Pam, pam, kabow. And I've also pointed this out before, and I should probably quiet down a bit, but I pointed this out before, but it's kind of doofy that the story takes this angle, which isn't that strong of an angle in the world they're in. Like, again, why would the Dragon World have the exact same pre... Like, it's just kind of weird, especially with Sumi, who's like, be nice to people. It doesn't make sense for this to be this way. There's so many more angles they could take that make more sense, even if it's just Lorem having imagined it all, or Ipsum paying people to do it because he's a dick. I don't know. I believe the fact that Ipsum just set everyone up for this more than anything. Because this ending just feels so... Ugh. And it's also the, the bad slash neutral ending. Like, put something in it. Everyone's gonna be the nice guy because that's what they're gonna fucking do. No one's gonna be a douche at this point. This is not how that works. People are gonna pick these options because they're curious. Or because they're playing a character. So let them l play it. Live it up. Live the medium in which you exist. Put those letters in the book to use. Put that music on the radio show to use. Let them graphics shine. You got the good music for it. Oh my god, Lauren. <laughs> Listen, Lorm, I'm going to say this, because this is something a lot of people just don't seem to understand. Let me, let me, let me put this, let me, let me, let me put this out there. If you're, if you're gay, you don't have to be gay. And that's a big problem <laughs> that no one seems to fully grasp is, it's your private life. You don't have to live it up. You don't. You don't have to walk into the face of a homophobe and be like, I'm smooching a guy. You don't. Have you ever considered that just because you're trans doesn't mean you have to act trans? You can just be trans and be yourself. Like, so many people dissect their personality and who they are from something that isn't... There's a component of what they are. It's like, I like the color blue. I'm blue! It's like, no, you just like blue. It's part of you. You're not... I can't deny it's not part of you. And it's not an important part of who you are and your decisions you're going to make in life. But that doesn't mean you have to do everything blue! You can do things that are counter to that, and be yourself. I don't know, it just feels kind of doofy to me. The people are like, man, I'm this, so I'm going to be everything about this. This is weird. Why? Why would you paint a target on yourself unless you're trying to exploit it for something?
that's the point of an ambassador, you dumbass! <laughs> like, an ambassador's entire reason to be there is to interfere with politics. That's the point. He's there to represent his own interests. You're, you're basically a, a, a foreign policy minister in another country. You're a spy, mostly, but for the most part, you're also there to kind of establish relations and make sure they're not going to say, like, okay, we're going to make an anti-human gas now. And it's like, what? Like, no, how about you not make that? I'm like, okay, we won't. Like, <laughs> Lorm, you, you fucking dipshit. You are misunderstanding the point. In fact, you don't seem to be conscious. You seem to be this whole other level of character. Like, something about everything Lorm does constantly feels like he was written for a completely different story. He's so much grander about everything in a weird way. Like, even Bryce is just like... And Anna's like, yeah. And Remy is just this manipulative Machiavellian asshole. But Lorem just kind of... I don't know. He's just falling apart despite... Nice third date. No, it's just... Mm, uh. Oh, oh, uh, 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 Lorm, Lorm, why are you the character that keeps having the stories where I don't, <laughs> why? Uh! I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take a minute, just sit right fucking there. Oh. Okay, so... <sighs> if you stand opposite of a big, burly man who hates you for what you are, and so far, you've gotten away with it. You, you, you somehow, you got away with it. You got, you got your say. Don't ever 
end your sentence with something as demeaning as as what's it called? I need to look it up now. Thesaurus. Just, uh, pejorative? Disparage, despise, abyss, cry. Belittle. That's a good one. We'll go with belittle. With something as belittling as saying it's a lot to take in. There is no situation in which you have to say that. You never have to say that. You have to say that when you're like, this is an important and difficult scientific experiment requiring all these advanced... But you don't... Mm, Lorem! If I ever meet Lorem, if I end in a timeline where I see him, I'm going to ask another timeline me who's not this angry to stop me from throttling the little fucker. Ugh! What a, what a dipshit he is. Why couldn't he just end and I've set my peace? And I hope you'll do something with it. Why does he have to specifically belittle you by saying it's a lot to take in for an ass like you? Because that's kind of what you're sending with the message. Is that you don't believe they actually... It's just, I'm, I'm gonna shut up. Why doesn't he say I thank you for your time? That's what I'm putting in. Just like that research stuff, I thank you for your time. It's a lot more lo logical to say. It's like, thank you. Thank you for giving me this moment. I'm off now. Because why would you end with a belittling statement where you can end with a polite one? That that kind of makes you human. Be human. Don't be a dick. It's, it's a simple thing to do. I'm, uh, I'm gonna... Uh, <clears throat> Ooh. <laughs> Ooh! You pee! Ooh! It's not that much more, but I'm way too angry. And it's been 40 minutes, and I want to kill someone! That's not a good time! Well, I, I don't want to kill anyone. I just want to kill this one specific little douchebag for having this smarmy little chat that he should not be having. This is not... I just... Mm, it just feels way too enabling. Like, I understand why, because it's not fun and you want to be serious about it, but at the same time... No is no! D I can't even I can't even make the the stupid joke. This is some this is how angry I am. In fact, I'm going to stop the music before I stop the recording. That that's that says something. Lorm, I want you to to do what you say and think about it. You little snot, you little snot nose.